Hi, and welcome to this lesson on finding fractions from shaded shapes and colouring in and all things that are exciting mathematics. Now, I don't know about you, but when I see the word fractions, my heart turns to ice. My knees wobble, and that's a little bit weird, bearing in mind I'm a maths teacher and fractions shouldn't really concern me. But they do, because I know how many people find them really, really hard. Now, as far as I'm concerned, fractions are all about going to eat chocolate and slices of pizza. If it gets any more complicated than that, then I will give you your money back that you have paid for this course, which actually turns out to be free. So, I've already got some bits and pieces of this lesson already sorted out, and I'm going to talk around things and circle things and colouring in things, and hopefully you'll understand. But, I actually think that fractions are cool. Right? Uh, because, as I said here, I love chocolate. Now, as far as I'm concerned, dairy milk chocolate is the best chocolate in the entire world. Why? Because it, it's the tastiest. Yes, over here in Australia, you might be wondering, well, doesn't it all taste the same? Well, let me promise you this. UK chocolate tastes so much better. But, let's imagine we have a block of chocolate. As you can see here, we have eight pieces, or eight blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And as you can see, as the question says here, three pieces are in fact shaded. Now, when I've got three shaded out of eight, I can actually write this as a fraction. How? Well, firstly, math is full of shortcuts and tricks, which, to be fair, we use later on. But I now know that the words out of generally means divided by. So I have three shaded pieces out of divided by eight. Now, when we write maths like this, we generally do it because we're trying to trick you. But we can write that in a far better way, and that is, in fact, three over eight. Now, here we go. As I've said, here is my three, here is my eight, and there is that little divide sign in between, which is an out of. As an aside, and that's something you guys really do need to know, are you aware that your calculator button actually has that symbol for a reason? Because what they're trying to do is they're trying to say to you, well, actually, this button here is almost my fraction button. Because I have a number on the top, I have a line between, which is actually a divide, and a line below. So really, what that's trying to tell you is, remember that this little thing here is a divide. It means exactly the same as 3 divided by 8. So this will mean 1 divided by 2, or 3 divided by 6, or 7 divided by 8, or, and I could keep going on, but I won't, because we've got the point. Now we might not have blocks of chocolate. As you can see here, I have now got eight pieces, but this time, in my second favourite meal of all time, that's pizza. Yes, pizza, 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 pizza. So, how many pieces have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces of pizza. And in this situation, how many pieces are coloured in, or how many am I going to eat? Yes, actually five. So, as we say here, we can write our fraction as five over eight. Or, five shaded pieces out of eight, or five pieces that I've eaten out of eight, or five red pieces out of eight, all mean the same thing. Now, what lots of people do is they go, oh, okay, hold on a moment. Fractions can be written in lots of different ways. And as I say here, if we had... If we have the fraction four over eight... Well, we actually see that if I'm going to eat four pieces out of eight, then the chances are I'm actually going to be eating half of it. Why? Well, this is where fractions are really cool, because we can make them smaller if the top number and the bottom number can be divided by the same number. So let's see what I mean by there. Well, the way I tell my students is, well, this number here is a four and that is an eight. Are they even numbers? Yes! Even numbers are funky, because if they are, they can all be divided by 2, or they can all be halved. So, what does that mean? That means, if I divide the top number by 2, then to keep it balanced, I have to divide the bottom number by 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2, and 8 divided by 2 is 4. Am I finished? No, because they're still even numbers. I can go again. And again, if I divide the top number by 2, and I divide the bottom number by 2... I get 1 over 2. Can I divide again? Yes, I can. No, hold on a moment. The top number's an odd number. 
Now, a lot of students tell me, well, yeah, I can actually divide the top and number by one. And I'm like, awesome. Let's do that. Let's divide the top and number, bottom number by one. And I get one over two. And let's do it again. And I get divide by one, divide by one, one over two. And really, we could be going on to infinity and beyond. Thank you, Buzz Lightyear. But the point of it is, actually, there's no point. There is no point dividing these numbers by one because one half is my lowest fraction. So, being able to simplify fractions is actually a really important skill because I imagine any test anyone sits, they're going to need to want to cancel a fraction down or show it in its simplest form. Now, when a question says simplest form, and my apologies for my handwriting, that's actually just code. Math is a big, fat trick. It's just there to try and trick you. There's someone sitting in an office trying to find 18 different words that all mean the same thing. So, big, fat trick, simplest form, just as code for, cancel down. Do the process I've just shown you. Now, what we can do forwards in maths, we can actually do backwards. And lots of math teachers spend so much time telling you how to do it forwards. We sort of hope you're just going to be able to do it backwards. So let's go back to this three over eight business. Let's say, okay, now I want to shade three over eight. What that means is, if you remember, for every three pieces I eat, what that means is for every eight pieces of pizza or chocolate, I'm going to eat three. And in this situation, I'm just gonna color in three. So let's have a go. This shape here has 16 pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. Thankfully, it didn't have a hundred pieces because this video would have been like nine hours long. So there are my sixteen pieces, and I've said for every eight pieces, I'm going to eat three, or in this situation, I'm going to color in three. Well, if you look at this block, we can actually see that there are groups of eight. And that's the best way to do this, as far as I'm concerned. Groups of eight. I've got a group of eight running across the top. And I have a group of eight running across the bottom. So there is my top group of eight. And here is my bottom group of eight. And every time I see eight pieces, I'm effectively going to colour in three. So one, two, and three. Am I finished? Nope, because for every eight pieces, I have to colour in three. And lots of students say to me, but can I just color in any three? And I'm like, absolutely. If I color in this one here, and this one here, and this one here, I've still colored in three eighths. Have I colored in all the sections of eights for this diagram? Yes, I have. So big smiley face, because I am now finished. If I was to color in one more piece, I would have made a mistake. And so think of fractions. This bottom number here, this eight, is really, really important. That tells you how you group, and the top number tells you how many pieces to color. Now, I know lots of primary school teachers get really upset when I start talking about the concept of bouncing decimals. But, hey, if you can understand the idea of multiplying and dividing by 10, you wouldn't even be watching this video, or you wouldn't be having a recap. So here we go. I like the idea of bouncing decimals because what I say to myself is, well, hold on a moment, every number has a decimal point. This number here, this number three, has a decimal point. You're going to say to me, no, it doesn't, I can't see the decimal point. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here is the trick. The number three actually is the same as three point. The decimal point is at the end, but I like to think of it as being a spy, as a super secret spy at the end. It's lurking, hiding in the shadows, only to be withdrawn or only to come out when we need it. Now, at this moment in time, we are going to need it because we're going to try and do 3 times 10. Now, we know in our head that that's going to be 30. And we know, because I've just told you, that at the end of every whole number is a decimal point lurking in the shadows. So here we go. Here is my decimal point. So multiplying by 10 seems to have moved my decimal from after the 3 to after a 3 and a 0 which means it must have jumped one place. Now you're going to say, but hold on a moment, how is that possible? Well, unlike lots and lots of shops in uh, Australia, and particularly in Melbourne, which put prices as three point, 
That's not right. The minute you put that decimal point in, the super star spy, which remember this decimal point is, has to be joined by its trusty sidekick, Zero Man. Right? That now is a proper decimal. And in fact, 3.00 is the same number. He just has two sidekicks. And 3.000, there's Whoa, exactly the same number, which is the same as 3.0000, which is the same as 3.00000, and we go on and on and on. Now, what's not the same is if I wrote 3.00001. That one now breaks that. So what we're saying is that after the decimal point, at the end of a whole number, we can put as many zeros as we like to allow us to jump these decimals. So, as I was saying, this 3 has now jumped a space. It was 3.0. It's now jumped to become, well, there's the 3, there's the 0, and the decimal point is now at the end. Wow! So hold on a moment. What we're saying is that when we times by 10, we are actually moving or bouncing my decimal point to the right. But it jumped one place. Ah, oh, hold on a moment. 10 has got one zero. So is that why it jumps one place? Hey, you are so right. So, and I'm running out of space, so let's go across even more. If I have three times, and in this case, 100, we know that the times is gonna bounce my decimals to the right. And how many zeros has this got? It's got two zeros. So it's gonna jump it to the right two places. So what do we do? Here is my three. There is my secret spy. And I'm going to put a zero in there. And I'm going to jump it one time. But I've got to jump it another time. Hold on a moment. What's there? Nothing. Absolutely, there is nothing there. Oh, hold on a moment. That's right. There is a nothing there. Because remember, we can put zeros in every time we jump. And so, what was 3.00 now becomes 300 point. Don't get confused. Remember, the decimal point has jumped those two places. Is that its final resting place? It appears so. And so it goes back into the shadows. So we know that 3 times 100 is equal to 300. This stuff is amazing. And that's what I've pretty much gone on to explain here. So there we go. This says that for every zero, when we multiply, we jump one place. So if we're jumping 10, it's one place. 100 is two places. 1,000 is three places. Wow, this stuff is amazing. And for those of you who need to, here is another example. I've taken 4.5 and I've times it by 100. Well, when we times by 100, we're going to move to the right and we move it two places. Is that what I do? Yes, indeedy. There's my 4.5. I've moved my decimal point two places, filling in this zero here. And so I finalize my question by saying, well, 4.5 times 100 must be 450. Remember earlier I said about doing things forwards and backwards? Well, maths is the same thing. When Generally, when we do things backwards, the rules work backwards as well. So I've given an example here of 300 divided by 10. Now we know that 300 divided by 10. Well, you might be all going, yeah, 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 jump it one place, that way, one place, one place. And I'll be going, no, maths has tricked you because that only works when you multiply. This time is a divide. And because times is the opposite of divide, when we do the divide, we're actually going to move my decimal place the other way. We're going to move it to the left. Now, the good news is that because there is one zero, we only move it one place. So we've got 300. Where is my super spy? It's at the end, lurking in the shadows, but it's back to return. It's now going to move one place this way. And you'll notice I do this jumping. And what do I get? Yes, there is the three. There's the zero, but there's now a point and a zero. Well, that is my right answer. And probably I could leave it like that, but I'm clever than that. You guys are clever than that. Because we know, as we've said earlier, if we have a decimal point and a zero hanging at the end, then they can actually disappear into the shadows. If I had 30.01, that would not be able to disappear into the shadows. But we're not worried about that now at the moment. We're just worried about that. So we now can write that 30 
divided by 10 is equal. We can now write 300 divided by 10 is equal to 30. What? So let's do this last example. We're going to do 3 divided by 100. Right, it's divide. So we're going to move my decimal point that way. It's got two zeros. I'm going to move it two places that way. So let's make sure that we bring our spy out of hiding. There he is, three point. And I'm going to move him two places. So ready. There is my decimal point. So I'm going to write him down. Oh my goodness, what have I jumped over? I've jumped over and nothing. Absolutely. So zero. There's my zero. There's my three. Remember, I don't need to write that decimal point. Why? Because he's jumped. Now again, it really, really upsets me when I see students write 0 0.03 or 0 0.5 or 0.25 because the sad thing is these are wrong. You cannot have a decimal point. The spy cannot just float at the front. He's got to be protected and he's protected by a zero. So rather than writing 0 0.5, I would write 0 0.5. And rather than writing 0 0.25, I'd write 0 0.25. There we go. That's the end of this lesson. Bouncing decimals, multiplying and dividing. We looked at colouring in fractions and we looked at reading off coloured in fractions and bars of chocolate and pizza. So, OK, I look forward to seeing you next time.